Hi guys, this is Anna and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'd like to talk about my March TBR and the books I'm currently reading. Straight away, I'd like to apologize for the quality of the sound in this video. I have horrible, horrible voice, I have laryngitis, and I had no voice pretty much for the entirety of this week. Today is Sunday, and if I don't do my recording today, it's going to take forever for you to have any videos to watch because I usually record on Sundays usually record four videos and then I post them during the next seven eight days and I only have two, two more videos to upload so I thought I'll give it a start I am sitting here in a slightly different location this is the opposite side of my library so opposite the bookshelves you usually see on the sofa cuddled up with a blanket and I have my warm drink so we'll see how my voice lasts this is the best I've had because I've lost it on a, sun, on a Wednesday. It was just not a good idea to teach on a Wednesday with a big flu. Right, so I have lots of books to show you. I'm covered in books on each side. Ah, and I hope you'll find this interesting. Okay, so I'd like to start with the books which I am currently actually reading and which are in paper. So I'm going to start with my read along, which I'm doing with Jennifer from the sort of here, and this is her middle March. Subtle name to do the read along in a mindful of March. And this is a read for me. I have read this previously, but it looks like I have definitely forgotten quite a lot of the subtle dialogue in this book. I'm currently, I think about halfway through, I'm page 485. And I have the Vintage Classics edition, so in my edition, this book is 889 pages. So yeah, so I'm about halfway through, as you can see, I have some notes, which I've just marked some of the passages, which I have truly enjoyed. And I have to say, I'm absolutely enjoying it. At the moment, this is still 5 out of 5 for me. And I have to say that I am now restricting the pace I'm reading it with because I don't want to burn out and read it really, really quickly. I'd like to take my time. I think that's what happened last time. I read it in three days and so I have forgotten most of it. I'm really enjoying going through it a couple of chapters a day. I love soap operas. I love to revisit the same scenes and the same characters over and over again. I like to have this slow paced dialogue they have with themselves and with each other. If you like Dickens, if you like Charles Dickens' works, if you like Elizabeth Gaskell, then this is a must read. I uh, highly, highly, highly recommend it. The books, it definitely reminds me of is Emma by Jane Austen. It has so many similarities with Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I don't know, it's not like the plot is the same, but you can have certain themes where you can see that People were definitely feeding off each other. As far as Dickens goes, it just, it's just last year I have read Little Doris. And there are bits in this book which just remind me, but mostly Elizabeth Gaskell's Wives and Daughters, like borrowing the money against expectations. When I'm reading some of the dialogues, it's like I'm rereading Wives and Daughters. It's just, and Wives and Daughters is my one of my favorite books of all time. So Middle March is, Middle March is beautiful. I'm so pleased that I have decided to reread it. And I will savor the experience and completely slow myself down. I have lots of other books to get to. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. i am also gotten back to my terms and conditions. And this is the non-fiction memoir book published by the Slightly Foxed. And this is by Cinder Maxton Graham. Life in the Girls Boarding Schools. 1939 and 1979 and I am, I think, page 185 out of 272, so I only have about 100 pages left of this one. And again, the more you read this book, the more you enjoy it, like you get the taste of it, you don't want to stop it. So again, I'm now restricting myself to a chapter a day, because I've now read 10 chapters and it's just... This is so good guys, but I don't know how to even advertise this book because like I wouldn't like, probably recommend it to my Russian watching booktubers because you have to live in the culture 
and where you have girls boarding schools and in Russia we don't have it so anymore you really get to understand so much about the British psychic and the British cultural divisions that so you have your society or you have to split into different layers and it blows some of the foreigners minds but when you brought up in the system it's just such an inherent part of your understanding of the British mentality that you don't even think about it twice and that's really strange because I have gone to boarding school here for my sixth form and for university things which I take for granted and I feel quite British about if you haven't had this experience you will find quite alien it shows you the racism horrible racism and snobbery like proper sarcastic class snobbery which nuns of all people had exhibited in their schools towards some of their pupils bits of this book are just utterly hilarious like so freaking funny because i know she's not lying she's really depicting the life as it is i highly recommend it the slightly fox have reissued this book by popular demand because it's been a darling uh, with the Times uh, Saturday supplement. Uh, they they have embraced this book when it first came out in slightly focused editions. They only do 2000 per an. So they have reissued the book. It's in a different cloth bound color. But if you can, if you're interested in a British mentality, if you're interested in education, and if you like things about history and mid 20th century, honestly, you will not regret it. I absolutely love this book. Uh, the third book, you've seen this multiple times, maybe you haven't seen it without the paper dust jacket, but this is my Poland Unbound, this is my massive non-fiction volume, I've been desperately trying to read for years and years, and this is the one of those books I aim to complete this year, and I have not opened it since January, since beginning of January, I'm currently on page 107. And my plan is to read 100 pages in the month of March. I think 100 pages is doable. It's still going to be a challenge because it's a dense, dense book and because I'm also reading a different historical nonfiction. So they kind of deal, not with the same period, but with the same... First they deal with the same placement geographically. And then, then they deal with the history, which is like 30 years apart. So, the book I'm, I'm going to show later, which I'm reading, helps to understand this one and vice versa. But it's really, really well written. I wouldn't say book, because I've said that word too many times. It's, it's a labor of love for the author. Like, you can see how long it took her to collect all of the materials meticulously because she had to travel to Russia, travel to Poland, she had to travel to the British Archive where she lives in Britain. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, but it's not an easy read. Right, I'm now going to show you some of the books I'm reading electronically. I'm first of all reading uh, the Orphan's Tale. I'm going to insert the picture here electronically. It's the book provided to me for a review by the Net Gully. And I was meant to finish it weeks ago, but it's just I'm stalling with it because I'm finding it rather samey. Like there are themes in this book which I have read previously. It's not a criticism of the book per se. It's maybe because I like certain things in literature. And if you like certain things, you tend to read books from in that genre or in that time period. So there is a lot of overlaps. So when I finish Orphan's Tale, I'm going to be reading Small Hours, which I have also requested for review in that gully. And I haven't started. The plan was to read it a while back. The second non-fiction book, which I am currently reading, is Historically Inevitable, which I have seen on Olive's channel. I've purchased it in February. Of January, I can't even remember. Basically, as soon as I seen her video, same day, I purchased it, started reading, and it's a collection of essays where they're talking about the counter history, like what could have been, if you could alter history, like maybe there is one event preceding the 1970s Russian Revolution which could have altered the course of the history, so you wouldn't end up with a revolution. 
and so far I've read several, I think I've read five essays out of this book and I've liked two, like really really liked them. My favourite was by Arlanda Figgs and there is one like, I really disliked and because I disagree with the question posed in the essay it's just I find the writing really pompous, really overly there, like it, it sounds like I'm being preached to by an author who thinks very highly of himself and I don't really like that but it, if you're interested in Russian history if you would like to know what are the writing styles of those various Russophiles this is an excellent place to start because you get to experience the writing and as I've said Arlanta Figgs for me seems to be the author so that now makes the idea of reading his people's strategy which is this big less daunting because I know I will probably enjoy the writing and that will lead to a much easier read for me. What else am I currently reading electronically? <sighs> I wouldn't say I'm currently reading, but I was meant to read it this month, but it hasn't happened. And that's Kurt Vonnegut's Gets Cradle, which is a classic as far as fantasy utopia go, and I have not read it. And I need to read it because this book is mentioned multiple times in the first two pages of uh, other books I would like to review for the Neb Gale. can't remember it's this one or it's the one I'm gonna read the other one but the one I want to get to the final one for the Neb Gale, is Stay With Me I believe it's a debut novel don't quote me on that I'm not feeling well and this is by Ayabami at the buyer. I'm butchering it. I'm definitely butchering it, but yes. This is the book. The final electronic book. Right, and this leaves me with a second pile of books I would like to read, which I have on paper. Starting with Willa Cather's or Pioneers. Still haven't started it. This is going to be rectified today. I have this Persephone edition of the journals. Vera Hudson, 1940-1945. I'm not going to read this because this is 500-600 pages. It's a mammoth. 600 pages, 590. So I'm aiming for 150 to 200 pages this month. So at least I get a decent dent into this. I would like to... Finally, get to read some Euripides. If you've been on my channel for a while, I've shown this book. I think my December books, and I haven't started it, and I need to because that was the plan for this year. That's why I have purchased it. So I will only read one play, and I can't decide. It's going to be El Sisters or Midday, one of the two, and I'll take the entire month to read it. So I'm not going to rush through it. It's a scholarly edition recommended by Alicia. She says it's one of the best. And it has beautiful large font, the quality of the paper is fantastic. And it has a really, really, really good preface from the editor, so I'm gonna take my time with this. Just start. Another book which I have previously shown you is the Alexandra Quartet by Lawrence Durrell. This is the second book on this list which I've shown you 1917 plants, uh, 2017 plants. Thinking about Russian Revolution books here. So it's a collection of four books, it's a quartet. And I don't know what possessed me, but clearly it was not a good day for me to get all four into this Faber and Faber edition because look at how tiny the font is. It's bloody ridiculous to read. I think I'm going to need a magnifying glass. So it has four stories. I have tried to read it last year and it just the writing could not agree with me. I found it words a bit too flowery but I'm gonna give it another go and what I plan to do in March is I would ideally love to finish the first book and in this edition it takes 195 pages but double that because that's how small the font is and that first book is Justine so I would love to be able to complete Justine out of this four because ideally this is the book I'd like to complete by the end of this year. <coughs> I 
that leaves me with three more books. I'm gonna start with The Doll by Marc Zabo. This is a Hungarian author. I have shown again these books in my purchases. I purchased two books by, I think it's New York. Yeah, New York books. I purchased it in December and I wasn't sure which one to start with. And I think I'm going to start with this one. This book has been recommended to me by Kinka Breit, one of my subscribers. She's been watching my channel for a while and I remember when I posted my book haul, I have asked my subscribers, like, if you have read this author, can you recommend which book to start with? I thought, yeah, maybe you read both, maybe you read one. She said she really likes the author and she has read the book and she thinks like, I should really read it. So I would like to, if not finish, at least start it this month. Two more books left. This one you've seen very recently in my January haul, 1913. There's just so many, so, so many book reviews on this in Russian booktube because it's been finally translated into Russian. And I'm like stalling myself not watching anything because I'd love to form my own opinion. But yeah, again, non-fiction. It's like going to be third non-fiction for this month. A third historical non-fiction, all set within 30 years of each other. Less than 30 years. Ah, we'll see how it goes. And finally, this is the only Russian book on this list. This is the collection of short stories by an author from St. Petersburg. It's called in St. Petersburg, in the summer in St. Petersburg, you can survive or you can live there because usually the weather is so horrible, it's so humid. It's like living in Stockholm and it's really, really humid and really hot. You feel like someone just sprayed you with diet coke or coca cola and it's getting stuck on you. And it's by Nikolai Kreshuk. I've never read him, but it's been, he's been mentioned on the Russian booktube. I think a year before or two years before, one of the all the more prominent Russian booktubers has recommended this book to read a while back, so I thought fine. I did to my book to my wish list and then I have purchased it over a year ago, so it's been on my shelves. And there's one short story here called The Diary of My Father, which has been very, very prominently discussed in 2005 in Russian critics, like literary critical journals, and it won the Tavlatov's Award. I have no idea whether he's been translated. I really doubt he has. But if he has, I'm going to let you know over here. So that's it. As you can see, I have, for me, I think, humongous plans. It's a lot of books I would like to get through. I don't think I'm going to be successful and read all of them. But I can give it a start. Today is the 5th of March. And I have already completed two books. And halfway through middle March. So it's it's a decent progress and the weather is picking up. And I'm feeling like even though I'm still recovering from my cold, but I'm feeling like more uplifted and when I feel more uplifted I want to read more. So really thank you guys for watching. My next video is gonna be slightly interesting because I'm gonna do it one chapter. I'm gonna to try to record it today. So I'll see you guys soon.